It's been a while since the last time we saw Kratos, Atreus, and Mamiya, both in Midgard and in real life. And if you're anything like this trio, your grand adventuring skills might be a bit rusty as you pick up the sticks. To help make sure you can get through Fimblewinter, and more importantly, the opening hours of the game, we've put together a list of our picks for the best skills, upgrades, and unlocks to get early on in God of War Ragnarok. Huh, that might be my best piece yet today. There won't be too much to customize from the very, very start of the game, except for your weapon skills. So let's begin there. Glacial Rake is a powerful ability that you can get fairly quickly if you save up your XP, and it's absolutely worth the relatively short wait. You should be able to collect the necessary 750 experience points if you save it all until just before returning home after tracking the bear in the opening hour of the game. By holding R1, Kratos drags his Leviathan Axe through the ground, sending forward a shockwave of ice. This attack is very fast to use, it almost always applies frost to the enemies that it strikes, and it can hit many targets in its path. There are other skills you could purchase earlier, such as the ranged Vengeful Sickle ability, but Glacial Rake is the strongest singular skill that you can buy for the axe when you're starting out. Once you pick up the Blades of Chaos after the first hour, you have a whole other set of skills to unlock. There aren't too many options here to start out with, but we recommend saving your XP after Glacial Rake and putting the points towards Hyperion Grapple for 750 XP, which you should be able to buy right before your fight with the Huntress. By holding R1 when aiming, Kratos will yank himself towards enemies, rather than pulling them towards him. This inflicts a large amount of stun, and also allows Kratos to get close at a moment's notice. Once you visit Sindri's house for the first time, you'll have two shield options to pick from. The Dauntless Shield is the classic God of War 2018 experience, rewarding parries for last second blocks. By comparison, the Stonewall Shield cannot parry enemies, but it absorbs damage from normal and even yellow attacks that can normally only be blocked by parrying with the Dauntless Shield. When you charge either shield by parrying or absorbing damage, you can unleash that energy at your enemies by double tapping L1. If you're looking for a more straightforward defense, we recommend starting with the Stonewall Shield. The upcoming enemies have some unpredictable parry timings and ranged attacks, so you may be grateful for the extra defense from the stone wall. You can also change your shield whenever you see the Holdra Brothers, though be warned that you have to upgrade each shield separately, so consider figuring out which one works best for you and sticking with it for a while. Use the frozen flame you received for defeating the Huntress to upgrade your axe and increase the number of skills available. If you only bought Glacial Rake and Hyperion Grapple, you should have just enough points to buy anything you want for the axe. We suggest purchasing Serpent's Snare for a satisfying and powerful heavy attack that makes your target double as a ranged frost detonation bomb. You can't really go wrong with your weapon skills from here on out, but here are a few of our favorites that you might want to try first as you explore Svartalfheim. Permafrost empowers your axe with frost as you do more damage without getting hit, which is a nice passive elemental buff. And Vengeful Sickle allows your axe to repeatedly strike an enemy after you charge a light ranged attack. For the Blades of Chaos, you could get the Blazing Explosion ability for 750 XP to increase the power of your ranged heavy attack. You can also get Rushing Chaos to add a new sprinting attack into your repertoire, but if nothing else here excites you too much, you can always hang on to your points and pick one of the skills that you will unlock for upgrading the blades, like the Immolation skill, which is the fire version of the Permafrost skill that we just mentioned. When you're talking to Brock or Sindri, you can also have a look at their available armor. You're probably only going to have enough hack silver to purchase one set at level 1, but here's what you can expect from each set of gear when it is one level stronger and it gains an extra perk. The Fortified Husk set strengthens Kratos' block and parries, adding a chance for you to retaliate against your foes with an explosive counterattack. The Vidar's Might set is all about dealing more damage at the end of a combo, and empowering Kratos to do more damage afterwards for a period of time. Both sets are viable options, but if we had to recommend one over the other, the Fortified Husk set will keep your health above zero for longer as you learn the combat systems. Each set of armor is made to work together, and you will receive compound bonuses for equipping the same armor pieces of a set, 
but you can also mix and match these if you want, say, a more protective piece of chest armor paired with wrist and waist armor that provides you with more damage. There's only two Leviathan Axe handles to choose from early on, so we recommend continuing to use the Furious Maul grip that you equip from the chest back at the house. This is as good a time as any to mention that unlike the first game, you can keep your starting equipment and upgrade it all the way through to the end game, but it will be decidedly average in comparison to other equipment while it is still at lower levels. When you finally have enough points to unlock something for Atreus, you'll want to unlock his Watchful Protector ability. His skill tree is quite small at the moment, so you might feel inclined to save up for something more powerful, but Watchful Protector is a good one to get now, as it allows Atreus to distract enemies if Kratos is becoming overwhelmed, which is invaluable during tougher fights. When you first arrive in Svartalfheim, there will be a number of side areas where you can beat your boat. In this area where you learn how to freeze geysers, there's a Nornia chest with a health upgrade inside. Jump up on the tall outcropping by freezing the geyser closest to the beach and climbing on top. You should see all three Nornia seals from here, so break them with your axe and then open the chest. There's also another chest further in the wetlands. When you see a golden chest overlooking the river, turn to the west and row underneath the rocky bridge. Clear out the enemies, and then rotate three seal locks to match the symbols on this chest. There's one behind the geyser, one above the feeding pit, and one on top of the upper area. Now open up the chest, and claim your horn of blood mead to increase your rage meter. The following pieces of gear can only be obtained by going to the optional area in Svartalfheim, so if you go straight to Durlin, then you will need to come back for these side quests and gear later. It will be a while before you can do that, so if you've been struggling at all up until this point, then these pieces of equipment can help you out a lot. If you decide to row into the Bay of Bounty for the in-service of Asgard quest to shut down the mining rigs, you will earn Nidavellir Ore, a unique material which can be used to craft a unique set of armor. The Nidavellir's Finest Armor set not only offers substantial increases to strength, defense, and vitality, meaning you will take less damage and have more health without losing much strength, but the chest piece will also grant a burst of health when you stun and grab an enemy. The other pieces of the armor set slow down the stun decay on enemies, and it's easily the strongest armor you'll get early on, so it's definitely worth clearing all three rigs before heading back to speak to Durlin. While in the Bay of Bounty, beach on the central island and go to the west of Sindri's shop. Here you'll fight a mini-boss Draugr known as the Hateful, and once defeated it will drop a number of things, including the Cursed Empress handles for your Blades of Chaos. These handles have a low chance of granting an increase to strength and runic damage every time you hit someone with them, while also providing a better stat increase than the basic steel handles you start with. Finally, to complete your new look with gear in every slot, you'll want a new shield rond. To do this early, you need to complete the side quest, The Weight of Chains, also in the Bay of Bounty. I'll do my best not to spoil it for you here. You start the quest by going to the island near the geyser, to the north of Sindri's central island where we just were. Follow the quest until you zipline over to this outcropping to the east. Open up the chest here to find the Rond of Aggravation. This Rond is best paired with the Dauntless Shield, as it rewards you with a Rage Burst on successful parries, but even if you don't want to parry with your shield, it has excellent stat increases to defense, vitality, and luck, so it's worth getting if you want to move away from basic equipment. Hopefully these tips help you in your early hours in Midgard, Svartalfheim, and the rest of the Nine Realms. For more on God of War Ragnarok, you can find our early game combat tips, or this spoiler-free list of things the game doesn't tell you. For all other things gaming and more, keep it here on IGN.